Welcome everybody, this is Brother Mute here. Today we're going to do a multiple part video to talk about our newest Arcane Bloodline build. This is going to be a true Magus build, one that goes from 1 to 20 all the way for an Arcane Bloodline. You can do it either as a strength based build, which is what I will end up doing, or you can do it as a dex based build. Those will play completely differently depending on the type of armor that you use. Again, for a strength based build, I don't mind using full plate. For a dex based build, I'd probably keep to the lighter armors, and in fact, in many cases, you can switch off to robes more on that later but it's up to you for a strength based build it, it hits the ground running the one of the reasons you do like a strength based build is the fact that with nothing more than your weapon power attack and a good piece of armor you're reasonably like a fighter not quite as good but you're definitely up there and again it is extremely helpful both builds in my opinion are teammate friendly both builds would have difficulty if not impossibility leveling uh, the game from let's say level three on up solo. The dex based build would probably have more luck in that regard, but more on that again later. I want to talk to you in this video we're going to talk about spell picks and of course because we're going to be focusing on a specific school of spells, in this case evocation, it makes the most sense to talk about those. Now we are going to be a fire evoker for this build and it's flavor of the month, but it's flavor of the month for a reason. It's the most common spell types that you'll see for damage and evocations are easy spells for us to get. Now, can we get all of them just as we naturally level up? No. So that means we're going to have to use our free spell picks at 9, 13, 17, and of course the 6 that you get at 19 to get all of them. How many are extra? 7. And that may mean for most people that you can only do this as an arcane bloodline if you really wanted to be an evocation type person, someone that specializes in every spell. They have all of them in the list. Quite frankly, I do like thematically playing a character that has specialized to that degree. There are many spells here that are kind of lackluster, and we will actually triage those out because, again, as an Eldritch Scion, you have limited spell picks. You don't get to relearn spells, swap them out after they become useless, so spells that might look good at the start are going to be really lackluster by the end of the game. I will talk about all of them. You can decide for yourself if you want to keep them or not. In the second video, it'll be an Excel spreadsheet where we specifically talk about things like the DC checks, you know, what range can you expect, uh, is there a gap depending on the type of damage that we're looking at, do I have fire damage, for example, at level 1, 2, 3, all the way up to level 6 spell casting, do I have single target damage, do I have AoE damage, and again, do I have crowd control, other uses for spells that aren't necessarily evocation spells. That'll be part of that video. And then in the third final video, we'll actually show you the completed build. Because there's a lot of decisions to make here. So when I talk about being a fire evoker, and first off, what do I mean? Well, fire is going to be one of your hardest hitting spells that we have. Uh, now, again, could you have gone something else? Sure, you could have gone cold evoker, and there would have been nothing wrong with that. There's plenty of cold spells, not as many as there are fire spells, but again, there are plenty of them out there. And again, you would enjoy a solid cold evoker build, in my opinion. I like fire because, again, I know there's plenty of those fire spells, and why not capitalize on that, since we really are going to be a spellcaster who can fight. That's what the build, to me, smacks of. Now, if you talk about the various types of spells uh, that evokers have access to, rarely do you see things where it's like, oh, I just crowd control that guy and I don't hurt them in any way, shape, or form. No, if you wanted to be a pacifist, you definitely didn't go evocation school. You literally are the guy or woman that literally is whooping up some serious damage on a target. Someone steals from you, you give them some damage because that's what you do. From there, you may be surprised that many of the spells, uh, when people associate them with wizards, sorcerers, and in our case, magi, are fire-based spells. Not all. So we have spells like Magic Missile. We'll have spells that do force damage. We'll have ones that are cold. We'll even have an acid spell or two. Not many, but they are there. So again, fire's your bread and butter. That doesn't mean that's what you limit yourself to. Because when you finally come across that guy that's immune to fire damage, you're really in a pinch. Now, of course, you have the ability to fight. Something that sorcerers don't really specialize in like you do. So again, when you come across that guy that just happens to be immune to all the spells that you have left, well, it's time to bust out a weapon and, and, and wreak some damage melee style. Just saying. But if you really think about uh, spell casting and damage, the first damage type that I think everyone comes to mind is fire damage. Why? Fireball spell is so iconic that it really is a staple in every build. It's one of those where I can't imagine if fireball is available, me not wanting that spell. Having said that, we will find excuses to not want fireball in this build. I know it sounds weird, but let me walk you through it and you'll understand why. 
again, if you think about Magi, the fact that you're a combat mage is the way I look at them, we will have a lot of spells. Uh, we will have to specialize, meaning, of course, spell focus, greater spell focus, elemental focus, greater elemental focus, school of powers given to us. So again, we have plenty of reasons to be buffed. Don't forget, we also get a bonus to our DC checks if we use metamagics. And because of that, our metamagics are going to be extremely useful for us for utility reasons alone. Again, when we get to the Excel spreadsheet, that'll become more apparent. But know that you're going to get at least two metamagics. I actually have, uh, in my build, managed to grab three. My favorite three, quite frankly. Extend, Reach, and Empower. Now, could you go Maximize? Sure. Could you go Quicken? You could, I suppose. I don't know why you would, but it's there. Uh, the one that's missing from that list that I still haven't talked about is one you should grab, too, and I just can't make myself do it. It's called Heightened Spell. Uh, Heightened Meta Magic is an amazing one, and it really gives you a humongous spellbook. The downside of this one, to me, is the fact that it's so overwhelmingly huge. I literally have a spell for every occasion at that point. And while that doesn't sound like a bad thing, your spellbook gets unwieldy at that point. But it's definitely a solid pick, and I'm not going to tell you not to grab it. But there's a lot of other ways to do damage, again, besides fire. Remember, you're going to have electric attacks. You're going to have cold damage. Again, we have a variety of ways of hurting targets. Downside's going to be we're always going to have targets that reflex dodge out of stuff. So make sure you grab enough spells that have fortitude saves or will saves. So again, planning in advance is going to be key. From there, I can't really say much more than to actually get into the spells and show you what we have available to you as a Magi. So, cantrips. Level 0 spells, however you want to think of it. Uh, the three cantrips that they give you default that are evocation spells are Light, Flare, Ray of Frost. And while Light and Ray of Frost don't much matter in the fact that they're not fire spells and they don't DC save, so who cares? You care, because they are your spells. You should know what they do. Obviously, Lights is an obvious one. The downside of this game, I must admit, is the fact there is no light penalty for things like stealth. There is no light penalty for things like um, uh, actually attacking a target in the dark. So again, it seems kind of weird that light is added to the game when there really is no benefit, per se, other than the visual aesthetic of having a light spell above your character's head. Again, it's there. It's what it is. Flare uh, is a DC checking spell, and therefore our evocation bonuses will increase the DC check here. That's nice. What does Flare do, though? Flare is nothing more than a single target, minus one to their perception, minus one to their attack bonus. So again, we'll penalize their swing for one minute. That's a save or suck spell. If they save, it's over, nothing happened. If they fail it, they don't get another check. So for at least one minute, you have gimped somebody, even if it is a little bit, for perception and, of course, attack bonus. Is that useful? I suppose. Is it amazing? Hell no, but it's a cantrip. What did you expect? Ray of Frost, on the other hand, while again, there's no DC check there, there's nothing to associate with being fire, obviously. It's still an important spell to note because it is a ray spell, therefore a touch attack. Remember when we said you had seven spells that you had to pick up from your free spell picks if you wanted to be a perfect quote-unquote evoker? Well, that leaves two spells tantalizingly free for you to just pick whatever you want, and you better believe I'm going to grab myself Sense Vitals. So again, Ray of Frost is a touch attack, and as such, you can sneak attack that thing. So it's worth mentioning. Of course, Acid Splash is here too, but it's not a can um, it's a cantrip, but it's not an evocation spell. So it's Disrupt Undead. It's a cantrip, but not an evocation spell. But again, they can be sneak attack as well. So again, it's worth noting those spells for those, especially deck-based builds, who will probably go... Uh, point blank master in my opinion now level one spells that you'd have access to are shocking grass burning hands magic missile and flare burst now those are the ones you can get as you level up notice ear piercing scream is here in red that's one you'd have to pick as a free spell pick and i would recommend you do so shocking grass is a staple you're going to get it anyway you are a magi after all concentrating your melee touch attack through your weapon for extra crit potential is always going to be a thing Shocking Grass, of course, is an evocation spell, so of course you're going to grab that too. And then, of course, so is Frigid Touch, as you'll see at level 2, you'll grab. And, of course, Vampiric Touch at level 3 is a Necromancy spell, but it's still a melee touch attack. You will still grab that spell. So we're not gimping your character in any realistic way as far as those are concerned. But you have limited spell picks, as you know. You can only usually get about 6 spells here. Uh, 7, if you count the fact that Magic Missile for us is free, 
but the point's still the same. There's other spells we want to have. I want a shield spell. I want to run fast. Maybe I want large person. If you're a dex based character, maybe you want reduced person. So again, just because you want to be an invoker, that doesn't mean that's the only thing you do. But Shock and Grasp is a staple. Burning Hands is a decent spell. And again, Fire Evocation spell with a DC check. The, our best category, no less. And it's the only AoE damaging spell you have access to at level 1. Just saying. It's kind of a nice spell for that regard. Damage is lackluster, but it can't be helped. It's a level 1 spell. Again, what did you expect? At least it's not crap damage like a cantrip. So again, it is useful. Magic Missile is a staple, and even though we get it for free, it's worth pointing out because, again, while the Arcane Bloodline can guarantee to grab every evocation spell, you may think the other ones can't. Remember, you needed seven free spell picks. They only get six. Well, that's true and also not true. They get their six, but if they had gone, uh, there's a specific uh, uh, heritage, I should say, of Asimer, and that Asimer gets Burning Arc for free. It's a level zero spell for them. I put that in air quotes. But we could pick it up, of course, as a free spell pick, and that's level two. You wouldn't have to, technically speaking. So again, there's a way for them to get around that seven is um, necessary for their free spell picks. They would actually be able to pick up all evocation spells. It's just their burning arc won't be quite as good. It still benefits from spell focus, greater spell focus, school power, elemental focus, greater elemental focus, your high charisma. So again, they're not feeling it too much. It's just a level zero spell versus a level two spell. So they're a little lower than you as far as their DC check, but not so much that you would really notice. From here though, Flare Burst is another spell for level one that's kind of an odd duck. It's nothing more than an AoE version of our Flare spell. And again, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, not teammate friendly. It's a save or suck spell. We have a real nice bonus to evocation spells anyway landing, so again, maybe you want to pick it up. I think I'll probably end up passing on that one, quite frankly. But I'll show it to you, show you what it does. It has at least a decent area of effect. And again, if they fail their check, minus one for one minute to their perception, minus one to their attack bonus. That's basically free armor for you and your whole goddamn team. I'm just saying, it's not great, but it's not as horrible as people make it out. Your Piercing Scream, on the other hand, is a, a free spell pick. You have to literally use a free spell pick to grab this spell. Now, would I grab it at 9? Hell no. Why? The Sense Vitals is available at 9. You know you're grabbing that as soon as possible. Am I grabbing it then at level 13? Well, then you've unlocked level 4 and 5 spells. you tell telling me you can't think of something better to grab that's level 4 or 5? Again, you will get it, but you're probably going to get it late in the build. Still okay, and I still want to have it. It's a solid spell. Good damage. Auto hit has effect on it. It's not a stun like Shout, uh, the Big Brother version, AoE version of this spell. It's actually a, a daze effect. But for those of you that don't know, the daze effect is nothing more than they stand there doing nothing. They can defend themselves. They're not helpless in any stretch of the imagination. It's not like stun. It's not like paralysis. No, they will literally defend themselves, but they cannot attack for one round and one round only. More on that, though, when we look at the spell, because metamagics can actually make that better. But level two spells now is where we really start to have some fun. Frigid Touch, you're always going to grab it anyway. No saving throw, so no really worry about the fact that it's an invocation spell, but you were going to pick it up anyway. Molt Mora, on the other hand, is a spell that does have a DC check. It is a fire spell, and therefore it'll be the best category that we have here, along with Burning Arc in a moment. We'll talk about it. But Molt Mora is kind of one of those spells where I'm just, I'm not sold by it. It's okay. Uh, it is a uh, touch attack. You have to throw it. Uh, so it's entirely possible that if you had like thrown weapons that you might get a bonus to this spells de or the, to hit check. I can't say as I care enough to actually even test it. Because it's probably one of those spells that I'm just not going to grab, quite frankly. It's okay. There's plenty of reasons to like it, quite frankly. You can catch targets on fire. The, the area of effect is extremely small. But uh, if you're casting it at someone that's at your feet, already in melee range attacking you, you'll set yourself on fire too. And that's just a no bueno. Can't do that shit. So I'll probably pass. Scorching Ray, on the other hand, is a solid, solid spell, which is what illustrated by the picture here. Amazing spell, really good damage, single target, can sneak attack that shit too. So again, you will love this spell. No a DC check, doesn't matter that it's a fire spell, but on all that, every time I say that, remember, since we're talking about evocation spells, there is nothing stopping you from grabbing spell specialization and therefore getting an extra ray sooner or more damage with like your burning arc or you get the idea. So there's plenty of reasons to want to specialize, so to speak. So just because it doesn't have a DC check, it doesn't mean it's not important that it falls in the school of evocation. 
Burning Dark. Now again, free spell pick, unless of course you went that particular route of Asimer and just decided not to waste a spell pick on it, which I can see. I'm not going that way. I'll go human, because I need the extra feet. But you can do what you want. But Burning Arc is a solid, solid pick. Decent damage. For the first guy you hit is 10d6 of damage, max. Then it bounces to multiple targets, doing 5d6 of damage to each of those guys. Again, reflex save. That's going to be a staple for your damaging spells. It's going to be something you just have to deal with. But again, best category for our DC check. It is a fire spell, and it's an evocation spell. So we're pumping the DC through the roof here. Really, really nice spell. Again, will I grab it early? No. Will I get it by level 19? Hell yeah. So again, there's reasons to want this spell. Fireball. Level 3 stuff. Fireball and Lightning Bolt are the only two that you have access to as you level up. Both are staples. Both are great spells. Now, if you want, I could see, and this is why I hate to say it, while Fireball is amazing, I could see passing on Fireball because I know at level 4 I'm going to get controlled Fireball. Uh, it's almost a must anyway because there's very few picks at level 4 anyway. Uh, that's probably one I'll definitely grab. Maybe even be a little late since we're going to have, like, Dragon's Breath. But Fireball here could go the way of the Dodo for me. Why? Not that it's not a great spell. It's definitely a great spell. But if I already have things like Burning Art coming my way for AoE damage, I already have Burning Hands perhaps on my build already, I already have AoE Fire Damage kind of on the build already. Not amazing, not at Fireball's level necessarily, but at the very least it's there. So I don't worry about it too much. Again, when you look at the Excel spreadsheet in the next video, it'll make a lot more sense. You will see that there are differences. Uh, holes, for example, to fill, where a lightning bolt, for example, fills one of those holes. We don't have damage for electricity at, at this magnitude at level 3 and level 5. We can, of course, take something like Shocking Grass and empower it and make it a level 3 spell. Nothing wrong with that. I will actually do so. Single target, that will do some decent damage. Not like lightning bolt can do. 10d6 is pretty damn potent. It's really hard to catch up to 10d6 of damage from something that does 5d6 of damage. So, Single target versus AoE, I'd rather have the AoE. Still, Shocking Grass covers us at level 3, technically speaking. At level 5, though, you can't make a Shocking Grass go that high. At least I can't. So, really, am I going to use Shocking Grass or, or something else to fill in that level 5 electric damage? Yes. It could be Lightning Bolt. It could be Lightning Bolt from Shadow Evocation, which is a level 5 spell. I'd rather grab this version. Why? It's an Evocation spell. We get a better DC check to it here. And because we're going to empower it to make it a level 5 casting, we'll get a better DC check because of, of course, the fact of our Arcane Bloodline. Anything that's meta magic gets a nice plus 1 minimum DC bonus. That's pretty awesome for us. Battering Blast is a free spell pick. And again, amazing. You will love it. You will love it more, quite frankly, than Scorching Ray. Because while these are 3 uh, rays, this one will eventually have 4. Now, will you have that right away? No, but by the time you pick this spell up, you'll probably have all 3 and then be working on the 4th. Just saying. And there's another reason than to want spell specialization at level 18 where you could put it on Battering Blast if you already have it and get all four of those attacks. Just saying. There's reasons to like this spell. So again, something that we'll look at when we get into the game. Level 4 now. Really starting to do some nice damage here, guys. Dragon's Breath, amazing spell. Different damage types. We got Fire, we got Acid, we got Electric and Cold all in one spell. And while I can, with my build, do nothing more than empower it, meaning it's a level 4 version or a level 6 version, but still some heavy utility there. And I definitely want that spell. No spell penetra uh, penetration issues, so again, a really, really useful spell. Control Fireball makes its case. Now, I wouldn't necessarily grab it first. Dragon Ball would definitely, or Dragon's Breath would definitely be first. But Control Fireball is still a staple. Shout, on the other hand, is a solid spell, which is illustrated here. Shout is a, a lame damage. It, it's another sonic spell. No, normally we don't have much in the way of sonic damage. Here's a way to get another one in a Wii version, no less. And, much like Ear Piercing Scream, it's a fortitude save. And, uh, unlike pier, pier, Ear Piercing Scream, it doesn't do daze. It does stun, a more useful effect. As such, it's a decent spell. Also, there's no spell resistance on this one. So, again, really nice. Not that we're worried. I mean, we're going to be a full caster level 20. But I didn't invest in spell pen or greater spell pen, so that could be an issue. So know which spells have no spell resistance on them. You will use them when those targets come along. Shield of Dawn and Ice Storm are also available. They're not my favorites, and neither is Volcanic Storm for that matter. I don't, for the love of God, understand why Volcanic Storm is hidden under the free spell picks when Ice Storm is not. It's the same spell, it's just 
cold smashing or excuse me, cold bludgeoning damage versus fire bludgeoning damage. I mean, why is that something that you would have to hide behind a free spell pick? I don't want it either, for that matter. But again, if I was playing solo, maybe I could see picking up Ice Storm. The difficult terrain is part of the problem. If I'm the only one to worry about the difficult terrain, then I guess I'll muddle through and deal with it. But I have a team. And as such, I don't want my team being slowed down either. So again, kind of annoying. Worse yet, for both Ice Storm and Volcanic Storm, they have after effects, not just the difficult terrain. After you've killed everybody on the map, you're walking through the area, you have a minus four penalty to your perception check. Well, that means if there's a trap out there, it's harder for me and my team to spot it. If there's secret loot out there, it's harder for me and my team to spot it. This cannot happen. So, I will pass on both of those spells. But, they are useful-ish. The area of effects are huge. The downside for me on that is also, I'm usually casting it into an area where I don't know where the bad guys are officially. It'll still hit them. The game knows that they're in the dark. That's fine. I don't know that there's not, like explosive barrels in the game. I don't know that there's like a, a peasant pee on somebody out there that I'm supposed to be saving and they can take damage from my spells. I don't want to cast an ice storm into that area of effect that I can't see into and murder someone that I'm supposed to be saving. That just sounds stupid. So again, I'm going to pass on stuff like that. But again, they are there. They are staples. Shield of Dawn, I'm going to pass on it as well. There is some reason to like this spell. There's no DC check, so there's nothing about that to worry about, so it's not that it's an invocation or even that it's a fire spell that is appealing. The appealing part is that with the amount of damage that they would take every time they smack you in the face with a melee weapon that is not a reach melee weapon, that's pretty impressive. Having said that, that means you have to be hit for it to work. And almost like volcanic, or sorry, vampiric uh, shadow shield, I just can't get behind a spell that relies on me taking damage, because I could die from that damage. And yes, Vampiric Shadow Shield's a little different in that it heals you back some of that damage, so that's kind of helpful. In this case, it's just more damage to the guy that's bludgeoning you to death. I suppose if you were paralyzed, this is a way for you to still do out some damage? So there is some utility here, but I still can't make myself pick this spell. Going on to level 5, we have Fire Snake, Cone of Cold, Icy Prison. Fire Snake and Cone of Cold, amazing spells. Everyone that's seen the Harry Potter movies knows what Fire Snake looks like. Voldemort was a prick. And man, that's a nice looking spell. Just saying. This is teammate friendly, which is nice. And again, your best category, Fire Evocation, assuming you do like me and go Fire. If you went Cone of, or sorry, Cold slash Evocation, then you would probably favor Cone of Cold over Fire Snake. Again, a solid spell. I'm still picking it. Great damage, really nice cone, very long cone, 50 foot range. You will appreciate this spell when you lock them down with like a web or Sirocco, tar pool, obsidian flow, and they're slowed down in that area of effect because that cone of coal can reach all corners of that thing and beyond, which is really, really nice. Icy Prison, a free spell pick, probably quite frankly going to be my spell pick at level 13 because it's available at level 13 and early as level 13. Now, why would I grab it as early as possible? This is your one and only paralysis spell that's an evocation spell. This is what keeps you on par with those goddamn enchanters that are holding person, holding monster, constricting coils, or uh, keeping ahead of that conjurer son of a bitch that's going to grab at level 6 spell casting Chains of Light, something that will allow him to paralyze somebody and beat them to death like there's nothing. So again, you will like this spell. Now again, you'll like it more if you went cold slash evocation, but again, that's on you. A, a good reason though for cold or for cold slash evocation in my opinion. Solid, solid spell. Decent damage. Lasts a long time, like one minute per cast or level longer than it should, quite frankly. And again, you're not going to sit there for the full 20 minutes watching someone take cold damage. That's a sick bastard. Just go over there to finish the bastard off. Coup de gras, the son of a bitch. Have some fun. But you will like Icy Prison. Level 6 spells. Now we're finally capped out. Chain Lightning, Hellfire Ray, and Sirocco are available as you level up and you will grab all of them. Cold Ice Strike and Elemental Assessor are free spell picks that you could pick up. If you were a cold guy, you would grab this one for sure. If you were a dex-based character, you'll probably even want Elemental Assessor. It's another beam spell, a single target ray spell. Um, I'm going to pass on both of them. I'll tell you why in a moment. Chain Lightning, silent spell illustrated here from the actual gameplay. Amazing spell, solid damage, 10, uh, 20d6 of damage, no less. And again, while most people won't go 
electric evoker, you could, and this would be one of the reasons you would like it, because this would be an amazing spell for a DC check. Solid, solid damage. Hellfire Ray, single target beam spell, three rays max. Amazing spell, and again, another reason to want to use spell specialization in evocation, so that you can get that third beam just a little bit sooner. That's some hella damage, and remember, that's not just fire damage, that's fire and unholy damage. So extremely useful, highly utility, as well as the fact that, again, you can sneak attack damage, Hellfire Rays. Sirocco, a staple that I always grab, AoE, solid damage, and in my case, since I'm Fire Evoker, the best DC check spell I have. Really, really solid spell. Now, going on to the free picks, Cold Ice Strike. Again, if you're a cold guy, I could see picking up for sure. I'm not married to this one. I might pick it up still, but again, there's better picks in my opinion. And if it's a free spell pick, then everything's available. You know, the sky's the limit. I want Tar Pool. I want Obsidian Flow. Greater Heroism. There's all kinds of spells that I want that aren't evocation spells. This one does good damage, and it's the only spell that you have that could do swift action, where you just cast it, poof, it fires off your hand. So that's nice. But at the same level, six, I can take something like Dragon's Breath, the Cold Breath, empower it, which I'll have the ability to do, and make it a level 6 casting. Now, yes, that will take a full round to cast. It'll do more damage than Gold Ice Strike, but it takes longer to cast it. You just get yourself a quick and meta magic rod, buddy. Click that little button, shoot that spell off, now it's instantaneous again. So again, you're back to being just as good as this, and slightly better, if not for the fact that Dragon's Breath, uh, remember, has no spell resistance. This one does. The downside... Cold Ice Strike has a better DC check than an Empowered Dragon's Breath does. Buy one. That's not enough reason to, to make me want to grab Cold Ice Strike. And it's hard to set up. It's a beam, uh, AOE beam, kind of like Lightning Bolt. Um, but unlike Lightning Bolt, instead of having a range of 120 feet, it has a range of 30. Kind of lame. But if you get mugged and you're in the corner, sometimes it's really nice to have that instant cast, instant cast, instant cast. Just saying, it's at your fingertips for a reason. Elemental Assessor now won't make my cut, but again, if you're a Ray Caster, I could see the utility. It won't do as much damage as Hellfire Ray. There's ways to make it do hella damage, though. And the reason for that is a couple things. One, there's a bunch of different variables in this spell. And what I mean by variables, I mean die rolls. So, because those variables can be empowered and or maximized, you can have one hell of a spell here. There's uh, a duration on the spell so you can extend it technically speaking so if you could find a way to extend and empower and maximize which I don't think you can do but if you could this thing could hit like a brick shit house and as long as you can survive long enough to watch the tick tick ticks go off it'll do hella damage to a target so again I could see the appeal here but to me this spell is better used on a sorcerer or a wizard build someone that has access to level 7 level 8 level 9 spells that they could empower they could maximize or they could extend it and again it's up to you, but I'm going to keep it off my list. Having said all that, that's all of our spells. Let's get into the game and actually see what the spells look like, shall we? Just as a reminder, if you had gone Asimer, there's a specific race of Asimer or heritage of Asimer that gets Burning Arc for free. That's the only other way for another bloodline that's not arcane to grab all of the uh, evocation spells. So it can be done, it's just not as popular as the arcane. Again, the arcane is going to have DC checks well above and beyond what they would have in any other build, so the reason you really went this way, quite frankly. For someone that wanted to do a Conjuration build, there's DC checks in those too, but remember, in many cases, Conjuration spells don't have a DC check, they just straight up do damage. And again, you could do that for an Arcane Bloodline build, I don't think it's the best use of an Arcane Bloodline build. So again, on you. Here is our character, I have all of the spells. Uh, I'm going to swap those around so I can show you Flare Burst first. I will buff up. I didn't get many of my buffs because I was busy grabbing every spell that I just So again, you see like things like Expeditious Retreat is missing. Again, another reason to get rid of Flare Burst. Um, if I didn't grab, say, Burning Hands for whatever reason, then I could get something like a large person or a reduced person. So again, there's reasons to like and hate the build all at once, but this is not the finished build. That's why we're not focusing on that. I will activate haste on myself just to let you be a little zippy. Because I'm sure you guys don't want to see me slug through this damn dungeon going pokey speeds. Ha! A trivial task. 
So here is our first spell. Well, I, I mean, I suppose I could show you Flare, but there's no point. It's the same as this version of Seth, Seth it being AoE, like this one is. It's single target, so again, I don't have to show you the other version. Their life ends here. Managed to get one. The other guy wasn't in the circle, apparently. I was expecting them to actually move a little bit. Uh, but a solid DC check. Again, evocation spell. Notice our toggle is on. Plus two. We have a solid, solid evocation bonus thanks to spell focus, greater spell focus, school of power, our toggle. That gives us a plus six to our evocation spells. Plus seven if I make them meta magic in any way, shape, or form. Then, uh, well, not counting, of course, meta magic rods. You know, if it's my meta magic, I should say. Um, then, if it was fire, I could have jacked it up another two points, which is why we use this spell to demonstrate it. Um, I'm going to actually cast it like this so I catch just the frog. Did you get the frog? Yeah, I did. Okay. So here's our uh, reflex saving spell. And two points higher because it's a fire evocation spell. So again, solid, solid spell. And again, just to look at that check 26. Highest possible charisma right now. If I get the best possible gear, that could go up another five points. So we're talking a level one spell doing a 31 DC check. Just saying. And again, I could empower this. So again, I cast it at level three. It would go up another point, so 31 would jump to 32. Yes, that's a level 3 casting, but still a solid, solid spell. Not the best in damage, but again, it's worth it. Uh, I'm going to take out this frog this and let the... Uh, where's the guy swinging at me? You should have run! Him, my bastard. I want him to swing at me so I can see... The penalty. What are you? There you go. That's attack bonus. When you see other minus one, that's for the one minute penalty from your flare burst. Same as flare if I did single target. So again, he failed his save. He's guaranteed for one minute to have that minus one penalty. Doesn't work on sightless targets, so again, not the best spell ever. The air of effect's not bad. I mean, I must admit, it's a lot bigger than I thought. Uh, one that does suck is something like Molten Orb. We'll talk about that in a moment. Let's go back to our level one spells and hit him with a solid ear piercing scream. Right away, right away. This is your free spell pick one. Solid spell. Fortitude, saving throw, not reflex. 24, not 26, because it's not fire, but it is an evocation spell, so it did get a bonus, so it's not bad. And again, can't be amazing, but the damage is still solid at 5d6 of damage. And again, we can you know, extend the duration on this, because there is a duration. We could reach it, because it, it has not long range distance, so we can make it longer. But we have the ability to empower or maximize it. So again, there's a lot of different meta magics that work on that spell. That gives you sonic potential damage at many, many levels of casting, which is some of the reasons for these picks. From here, let's get into, say, let's do a quick save, in case I like the room, I just keep coming back to the same room of fighting. Yeah, okay, this would be a good room for stuff. Okay, so we just did all of our level one stuff. Of course, here's your Scorching Ray. Solid, solid spell. Better, of course, if you have Sense Vitals on it, it's a sneak attack level. That's 5d6 of damage per beam. It could have done extra if I had sneak attack on. And again, if you're a dex-based character, you're definitely going to want to use that spell a lot, in my opinion. Uh, here is the one that I don't like, Molten Orb. Terrible spell. Uh, you know, it did damage, but these guys are straight up suck. It is a touch attack, so at least there's that. You managed to catch him flat-footed, so yay me. The damage for the guy that got hit is 2d6. Notice it is a bomb spell, as far as they're concerned. So it behaves like a bomb, AoE damage, and again, just to show you again the size of the AoE, it's lame. It is extremely lame. I can barely get both those dudes in that. Now he's dead, so he's not lighting up, but I bet you it would have hit him too, but just barely. So you're maybe getting what, two, maybe three guys with this spell, and definitely you if they, you cast it and he runs up into your face, because you're going to get caught in the splash damage, and that's straight up suck. So again, kind of weird. Um, from here... The one spell you probably do want to pick up, and it's a free spell pick, again, unless you want Asimer. Here's your Burning Arc. Actually, I don't want to use that one right now, uh, because I want to use it on the target, so you can see the AoE effect of it. Matter 
of fact, let's just go back into the room and redo it. We we'll use Burning Heart in the same way. There's two guys in there. And it'll give you a chance to see Their life ends here. the uh, effect. Uh, was able to catch all three, and they were decent pacing. Now, are they as big a pacing as something like Fireball? Hell no. So Fireball's definitely going to catch more dudes. So will, of course, control Fireball. They're the same spell, technically, as far as area of effect and damage. Not DC check, though. Remember, this is level 4, this is level 3. So again, Fireball is subpar to control Fireball in that regard. You do get it sooner. It's kind of hard to pass it up since you know you're going to be a fire guy. Just saying, there's reasons to like it and there's reasons to hate it. Now, before I show you Fireball, let's show you one that's kind of glitchy. The ones that are the beam spells, that are the, the AOE beam spells, like Lightning Bolt, if you cast them just like this, and you move the cursor a little bit after you cast it, it's, it tends to make the beam go in different directions than you wanted it to go. So if you really want to go here, you need to like activate it and stand still. Manage to get one dude. Again, kind of hard to line those ones up. But again, in a hallway setting, where they're all running down in a nice tight little formation, like little, little lemmings should, it's really easy to light those dudes up like a Christmas tree. So again, solid damage, electric damage, different damage type. Still a reflex save, nice bonus to DC, not as good as our fireball spell is going to be, as you'll see right now. Now, DC check on that. Two points higher. So again, same damage, easier to set up in my opinion, but again, on you to decide which one you must have. The reason I say must, because if you look at our spell book for level 3, you'll notice I grab both those spells, Dispel Magic's free, Vampiric Touch and Displacement are staples, Battering Blast is a free one, so you don't even look at that one. Then the last two choices that are Haste, Stink, and Cloud, you notice that Slow is missing. And I like that spell. It's a will save spell, no less. And again, AOE, teammate friendly, and I kind of like having it, especially when those bastards haste themselves, I like to debuff them. So again, there's reasons to want slow, but I couldn't grab it in the current build because I'm grabbing Fireball and Lightning Bolt. Now, do I need both? Again, judgment call. Do you need Fireball? Because you got Controlled Fireball coming, you already have Burning Arc going to be in your build, Scorching Rays definitely on your build early, and again, Burning Hands may or may not be on your build if it is cast it at level 3 because again I can make this an empowered version of the spell like so and there is burning hands now it's not as good damage as fireball but it's still AOE damage so I still meet my requirements again the Batman slash MacGyver of the wizarding world that's our goal here so again up to you but solid solid spell picks now of course I'd be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about your beam spells, especially for a deck space build like Their you guys might want to go. Here. If you're a point ah, blank master, gee. this spell is actually better damage than your Scorching Ray. It's because it can have four attacks versus three is one reason. The other is, of course, because you can sneak attack them just like you do Scorching Ray. You can sneak attack then four times potentially instead of three times potentially with Scorching Ray versus your Battering Blast. It's force damage, so very few targets resist it. Even if they make the save, which we have a bonus too. Um, it didn't show up yet. Because I have to finish the spell. But the bull rush attack. Notice the 58, massive 58 that we have here, has to do with um, uh, your caster level and your charisma bonus and a couple other things, like how many balls hit him in the face. As weird as that sounds, one is enough to get you base, which is right around 27 or so. Uh, every ball after it hits him one, two, three times adds another 10. That's why 27 goes to 28, goes to 20, or sorry, 27 goes to 37, which goes to 47, which goes to 57. Why it's 58, I don't know. We got an extra bonus here for some reason. That maybe it's a point blank shot. I don't know. But something happened there. It should have been, in my opinion, 57. Yeah, because I have 7 for charisma. But whatever. Point is, is it's a solid, solid knockback. The more they hit, the more likely it is that it will knock them back. It's a bull rush attempt. I've used this spell alone uh, to great effect. Uh, for instance, I was playing the Tenabris uh, Depths, this particular character, something similar, and I had this spell, and I was having very large, ferocious, raging, uh, fire-resistant immune trolls coming at me on the map where they're also immune to acid damage and talking about some scary-ass shit. 
Uh, they were penetrating my Sirocco and certainly penetrating my web spell in many cases. There's like five of them. You know, three would get caught up, but one or two would always sneak on through. If I needed to push them back, I would use this spell to knock their happy asses back. It hit them hard enough that if someone as strong as a troll and they were still able to freaking fly back past the web and Sirocco effect and then keep walking back through it again and would get tangled up in it at that point. Extremely useful. It's basically like Dungeon Pool is the way I consider this spell. Amazing spell. You're definitely going to like it. Uh, from here, of course, controlled fireball just to show that the DC check is slightly better than fireball. Only by one. 29 versus 28. And again, could be five points higher minimum. Again, highest charisma that I could possibly get you on this build. So again, 34 is what you could expect to see. And I can get it higher than that with gear, because there's epic gear out there that buff fire spells or evocation spells, DC checks. So again, you're going to be very, very happy with being an evoker, in my opinion. From here, let's do to some of that awesome dragon's breath, because we got all kinds of choices for that, right? so Let's grab some of the beam ones. And again, it's a lot like lightning bolt in the regard that if you move a little bit while casting it, you will fuck it up and it will go right where you don't want it to. So, you gotta get used to shooting them like that. Again, that's why people like the cones in my opinion. Now, why am I using the acid one when fire would technically be better? It would be better, by the way, because the DC check would be two points higher. So again, 27 versus 29. Why am I doing the lame-ass acid then? Because I'm trying to remind you that you have multiple different castings, uh, damage-wise. This was one of our few acid spells on this build. You'll notice if you look at our spell book, I did not pick up Acid Arrow. Another reason to want to get rid of something like Molten Orb. Um, I did not grab the first time I made this build, Acid Fog, and man did I feel it. Again, all my acid came from uh, Dragon's Breath, either level 4 version or the level 6 version because I would empower it, or my Acidic Spray. And that's it. So I had level 4, 5, and 6 acid damage, nothing at 1, 2, or 3. And that's just weird. I have, you know, Acid Splash. And while I don't want to poo-poo Acid Splash, because 1d3 plus 1 if it's point-blank range, is lame sauce damage, sure. Remember, you have Sense Vitals. That will take a, a spell like this and do another 5d6 of Acid Damage. So this is not the bad spell by any stretch of the imagination. Neither is Ray of Frost, neither is Disrupt Undead. They're staples for a reason, especially if you're going that deck space route. So don't discount them. I'm just pointing out that, again, this acid damage was necessary for me to pass many levels. I managed to get to level 31 running solo. Now, yes, I was level 20 when I rent in, but uh, I was with the normal non-magic gear built up into really good magic gear by the time I got to level 31 and I wasn't done yet. I saved it and stopped and moved on to make this video. But the character solid is my point. There were holes, though. When I tested out, uh, that's when I realized like I didn't grab lightning bolt. This one I did. Why was that important? Because Lightning Bolt was needed to be empowered, so I can do it here. So again, if I were to go to my spell book, go to three Lightning Bolt, Meta Magic, I could empower it, like so, and now I would have Electric Damage at level 5. And again, is that necessary? It's not necessary. The point was, is I was missing Electric Damage. So when I got to those trolls that were taking immunity to fire and they're on that map where they're immune to acid as well. You know how hard it is to kill a troll without fire and without acid? It's almost impossible. The good news is, is if you knock them down, the devs were smart enough that if you kill them, you know, quote unquote kill them where they stay down and they're healing back up like they always do, you can finish them off with any fire or acid spell. Even if it says they take zero damage, it will kill them at that point. So there is that. But you have to beat them down or use other spells. Like, I don't know, it would have been nice to have lightning bolt to blast in their face especially the empowered version. So again, I really didn't miss it because having this and having this was not enough. Good news was is I was using Cone of Cold to great effect. But the point was it would have been nice to have Electric too. So again, that's the, what I'm saying when we try to have the utility. That's what our meta magics are really doing for us. So solid, solid picks. From here, oh, let's see what else. So we did Dragon's Breath. I don't need to show you all of them. Um, just open up the pinwheel to show you that you have a variety. Though, so we have electric only in a beam, we have cold only in a cone, and we have both versions of fire, cone versus beam. So on you, again, beams are better for when you're shooting down the hallway, you're running away, because that's a long ass range. Was that 120? No, 60 foot. So that's not even as long as lightning bolt, which is 120, twice as long no less. But these uh, 30 foot cones are pretty impressive when you get to something like. 
there's a cone of cold though that's a 50 foot cone you want to talk about impressive holy hell so again plenty of options here i'm not going to use them now I'm let's there. pull Our these doofuses together here. to a nice tight corner and let's show you your other sonic damage wasn't long enough to catch the other guy but that's okay if i would have waited a second longer i would have caught all three not the best damage ever i'll grant you but a solid solid dc check remember it's an evocation spell there's not any way that I know of to, to increase the DC checks of Sonic spells. There probably is. I just haven't seen it. If there is, look for it. Again, you will enjoy having a higher DC check. Now, would I bank on that DC check? No. It is useful, though. And again, remember, this is an AoE stun. Now, it's only for one round. But good news is, for that same spell, like I said before, we have different meta magics. Why did I grab different ones? Because I can extend things like shout because it has a duration so i have a level five casting of it if i want to empower it for just extra damage because it is pretty lackluster damage i can do so too so again if you go to your spell book now i have shout at level four a version at five and a version at six so i have sonic damage three different places now not counting of course ear piercing screen which i can buff three different ways so i can reach it i can extend it I can empower it, I can empower and reach it, or empower and extend it, I can do all three and get it all the way up to here. It's kind of weird, but I will do that. So again, solid, solid choices here for your spells. Um, let's see, that was Shout, so I'm not going to do the Shield of Dawn, that's just weird. Um, and I don't like, like this is the Volcanic, I'll do the Ice Storm just to show you. The AoE, like I said, is flipping huge. It's one of those that's so big you can't even see all the bad guys. And boom, hey, they're taking damage. That's awesome. But again, was there explosive bombs or barrels in the area? I don't know. Was there a, a teammate or someone in there that you wanted to save? Now they take damage. Did they die from it? I don't know. Again, I can't stand that. And I hate that I'm slow. And I hate that I have a perception penalty. It's just a weird idea. Now, if I'm going solo, I'd get around it. I really would. I wouldn't mind so much. But on a team, hell no. Um look at our cone of cold. Their life ends here. Yeah, you can get these guys kind of lined up a little bit this time. Oh, oh, the last uh, this thing is amazing. And the reason it's so amazing is the AoE effect. If I had something like Sirocco down, just to show it to you. Like, normally I put Sirocco just before where it activates on my feet, right? So there's your Sirocco. They'd get caught in all that. If you want to just kill them a little bit faster, take a tiny step back. See how it covers the entire area and then some beyond it? You gotta love it. So you would just pull and pull, pull and pull, pull and pull. So again, we'll catch them all. Amazing combo. So again, you will like having Cone of Cold. Especially if, again, if you went Cold Evocation. Which, again, I'm not telling you not to do. It's a solid, solid choice. Uh, of course, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk, uh, forget to talk about the best one you have this level, which is your Fire Snake. If you go my way, of course. You get two, probably could have lined it up a little better, but I have caught three. But solid, solid hit, and again, the best DC check that you have for this level right now because you're a fire evoker. And again, it could be five points higher minimum, guys. 35 DC check. Solid DC check. Just saying. Uh, honorable mention, it's not on the list, but it's in my book. And I want to point it out to you guys. I know it's not an evocation spell. But if we're talking about when I pick them when I level up, I'll show you that in the actual build video, which is two videos away. But just to note, I would not grab Cone of Cold and Fire Snake back to back like this. I'd grab Fire Snake and probably Cloud Kill, quite frankly. And I wouldn't even grab Cone of Cold after that. I'd grab Acidic Spray, and then I'd grab Cone of Cold. Why? Because while Cone of Cold does hella damage, so does Fire Snake's Acidic Spray does more damage. Again, yes, we don't have a bonus to the DC check, but Cone of Cold is not as good as Fire Snake for the DC check. So again, I grab the best DC check, time to grab the best damage, then get the middle ground one, the one that does decent damage and has a okay, solid DC check. Remember, it's plus four, not plus uh, six like this one is, because remember the fire. So again, that's how I would do that, just to point that out to you. And again, Acidic Spray, another different damaging type, so extremely useful. Uh, let's show you your one and only paralysis spell. Everybody wants to have. Notice it won't do damage on the first hit. He's paralyzed. I can prove that he's helpless by coup de gras. See that there's no X. See how there is an X? Again, he is helpless. 
you or someone else on your team can go over there and do coup de gras basically and massive guaranteed crit damage awesome awesome way to set someone up especially for an empowered maximized version of vampire touch mm -hmm. just saying reasons to do it so again comes in late but remember this is the one that i said i'd pick up at 13 that's the soonest i can grab it in this build i'd probably take it as soon as possible again it's like sense of idols it's that good of a spell you gotta grab something like that in my opinion as soon as you can you will benefit from it from start to finish as soon as you have until the end of the build you'll definitely appreciate having that spell you may not use it in every battle it doesn't do that much damage it's 20 uh, at best case scenario for me it's 20 cold damage by level 20 but it's every round not counting the first round he's just paralyzed for this one even if he breaks out of it or saves saves on that check he's entangled by the way i was using this spell to hold off those trolls no not just trolls ferocious fireproof acid proof raging berserker trolls that were getting through my Sirocco and my web spell. If I wasn't battering, blasting those bastards away with a level 3 or level 4 spell, I was using my level 5 Icy Prison to lock the bastards up. And while they'd probably make the save sometime, because remember, they get to check every round, when you see the check that's coming for him, it'll make more sense, trust me. Let's uh, let that tick off and let's use a little Hillfire for loving on this guy. Again, amazing damage, and as much as you loved having this damage type going out there, four beams is impressive, even with sneak attack damage. It cannot compare with the damage you're doing from Hellfire Ray, especially if you do sneak attack damage. So it's still a staple, you're still going to grab it. But this one is filling the gap of single target damage a lot. Don't kid yourself. Again, it's one of those where this one's nice while you have it, then you'll upgrade to this version, and then when you finally get to this one, this will be your bread and butter. But again, pricey spells, level 4, level 5, level 6. Again, it's nice to have a couple level 2 spells in your back pocket when you want to do a beam, beam, beam. Just because, you know, you don't need to do maximum damage every time. If, you know, a love tap is enough to take the guy out, do it. Uh, let's see, so that's the there. We've already done Sirocco, but let's just fire it off to show the PC check. Oops, sorry, I almost forgot. This is the strength check. Notice it's 35. Why is it 35? The DC on this is set to 15 plus your spellcaster level, which in our case is 20. Remember I mentioned spell specialization? There's a reason to go spell specialization at level 20 where you literally say, I want it to be in Icy Prison. I'm betting, I haven't done the test yet, but I'm betting that DC check would go up to 37. That's not amazing. It'll last, you know, another two minutes longer. That That's not amazing either because you're still not going to let it tick for 22 goddamn minutes. You're going to go over there and finish the dude off. No one's going to sit there for that long. But it's nice to know that you can still benefit from spell specialization even as a level 20 caster is my point. So again, pretty damn cool. This will uh, hurt! Oops. You shall run. I forgot to cast the spell. I thought I did. Um, so let's uh, do Sirocco on these doofuses. And I'll show you how I normally set it up. So I like literally get into the room, get everybody here. over here, cast it pretty much at the damn doorway. Like Notice my AI is off. This is a trick that I've learned from Mithros. His videos are amazing, and you like him more than me because he doesn't talk. So again, you'll probably be happier with his videos. But he hasn't posted in a while, and I have learned a ton. He's the one, by the way, that soloed the game with nothing more than a sorceress. So for all those people, they're like, oh, you can't possibly because you don't have touch armor class. Bullshit. He did it with a sorceress and crushed it. Now, of course, he met a game like crazy. He had to know exactly what he was doing in every area, so he was scum saving, I'm sure of it. Not the point. It can be done, so don't let people tell you you can't do shit. Uh, this is my Sirocco, though, and I usually grab him, pull him to a corner, or in this case, the doorway, up to you. I like the doorway because I know I can hop at an angle with a teleport spell, uh, which I don't have in my list. There was my dimension door, so I can dimension door here, or here, or here. You can actually reach just barely to the other side and like I said, see, I'm not in it right now, and it's more than a few feet distance to make sure that I clear it. So again, you're fine. It is finicky, and if you start stacking them, for instance, like one on top of the other, a common mistake is to you know be a little bit closer or a little bit farther back, meaning that it's an extended Sirocco. It's a little bit wider, more oblong than circle, which means you might not be able to teleport across it. That's why I like the doorway, because if I mess that up, I can teleport to the left or to the right. So again, on you. But again, this was our best DC checking spell, right? This was the, the highest, the ultimate 
fire evocation spell I can give you. Level 6 fire evocation spell benefits from it. It's a 31 DC check plus 5 minimum I can slap on there for sure. That's a 36 DC, guys. That's pretty goddamn huge. Now, is there ways to make it better? Yes, there's a robe, for instance, for all those deck space builds that think that you can go with like braces of armor class plus 8 and having a, a belt of dexterity so your dex is not only plus 3 but maybe it's plus 7. Again, you could totally solo that way for a long, long while. You may not beat the game, but you'll do well. And um, there's a way to do a, a robe that is a robe for each of the different four elements. So there's one that gives a plus two to the DC checks for cold, for acid, for electric, and then one, of course, for fire. So if you had the fire robe on, I would not do it because I need my plate mail. But for a deck space build, you could bump that 31 to a 33, and then another five more on top of that. You could have been at a 38 DC check. Just saying, is it as impressive as what some of the wizards and, and sorcerers can pull at their level seven, eight, and nine spells? No, but it's definitely up there. And again, a solid, solid hit. So again, you will really like having Sirocco, in my opinion. Now let's do Chain Lightning. You already know this one. The reason I like this one is because it bounces better than um, the life ends a Burning here. Arch spell. It has a, a much bigger jump, if you will. So let's fire down the guy in the back. See that? That was a decent amount of distance. Chances are Burning Arc would not have jumped that far. Again, that's a, a guess, but Burning Arc is usually really close. So, you will like Chain Lightning. And again, if you want Electric Evoker, which I'm not going to stop you from doing, it's not the best idea, but it's not by far the worst. Acid Evoker would definitely be the worst, in my opinion. Um, but a solid, solid choice. And again, we had a really nice DC check on that one, 29. From here, Cold Ice Strike. This is that instant cast one. So again, you're yeah, surprised. Oh no, here. what do I do? I had no idea that there were guys here. And I guess I will just instant cast a spell like that. And that's why you like that spell. I'm not a fan. Uh, it's a beam. The beam is not long at all. That really straight up sucks, in my opinion. Um, but it's, you know, it does what it's supposed to do but it's just damage. That's all it really is, is damage. We get a bonus to the DC check. It's a solid DC check. Again, if I was Cold Evoker, I'd pick it up for sure because you can't have enough Cold Spells, in my opinion. Um, but I'd rather just use the Dragon's Breath the Hobbit version and then go from there. And I can show you that one. It's a little harder to set up. Our life ends here. So go here. And I believe I already made the spell. Oh, I have not. Fortunately, we can make spells on the fly while the game's paused. Dragon's Breath, Meta Magic, Empowered. Boom. There it is waiting for me now. Okay. Now, remember, cold damage is what we want, but it's a full round to cast that shit. And that was a lot faster than a full round, you liar. Brother Mute, what the hell are you doing to me? Fiddling around too damn much. Probably because I was in mid um, combat. That's the reason for that. Let's actually do that again and prove it to you. Because again, it should be a full round to cast, and I don't want to show you something that's not true. So we need to make it again because I didn't save it, right? Yeah. Here we go. Bad magic. Empowered. Damage. Give me that empowered damage. Their life ends here! Pull down to the corner. Oh. Wow. It's lying. It says clearly in the spell description now that it is a full round casting time and it's not doing that. That's actually awesome then. That means it's better than Cold Ice Strike. Never mind. I'm happy. Uh, but again, one that you were going to do anyway. So that's my point. So Dragon's Breath Empowered version is level 4, level 6 for the Empowered version it is reason to want that spell. Um, here's your Elemental Assessor. Of course, this is your last one. Be nice. Not my favorite. I'm not really good at my Ray cast because I have a crap dexterity. So it's another reason I don't like it. But remember, it does four different types of damage right at the bat. 2d6 of Acid, Fire, Cold, and uh, Electric. And whichever did the most damage, in this case fire and electric, if they had survived, it would have ticked for one to four more rounds 
of fire, 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 fire damage, maybe, of 46 of damage. So even more damage for those ticks. And again, all those are variables. So again, all those can be empowered. All those can be maximized. And because there's a duration, you can extend it. And how do I know that? If you look at my spell at level 6, you can see even though I can't make them, I can pretend to make them. So I can extend it. Hell, I can even reach it. And I can definitely empower and maximize it. Now again, I don't have anything beyond level 6 to cast it with. So this is why I say it's better for a sorcerer slash wizard that can do multiple permutations of shit. Like they could do a level 9 casting of that spell that has been extended and empowered and then use a, a maximized metamagic rod, a greater maximized metamagic rod to get the full benefit out of that thing. Holy hell, that thing would do some damage. When we get to the Excel spreadsheet in the next video, I'll show you what those numbers actually equal out to so you can kind of get a feel for what it could have done. But again, a solid pick, just not for me. And I do love the multicolored Christmas tree of explosion because of the different types of damage. That's just, just funny. But that's basically all I wanted to show you guys today. And then don't forget, uh, if you're a strength-based build, chances are you're doing some kind of power attack, corn against smash, dreadful carnage. I'll show you that. If you're going dex, in my opinion, you're going more the weapon finesse dodging slash point blank master build. And again, potato patata, kind of on you for what you want to build for. I like strength because then I can use my feats for things that I want to use the feats on. And while this build isn't done, just to show you a, a small glimpse, remember I grabbed spell focus and greater spell focus. I grabbed elemental focus and greater elemental focus. I didn't uh, grab, uh, I grabbed three different meta magics. I didn't grab a spell specialization. I can, I just didn't. And again, I'd have to decide on what I'd lose out on, like dazzling display, shatter defenses. I kind of want all these things. But arcane strike might be the thing that has to fall along the way for me to get spell specialization and maybe hey maybe that's worth it because you know that that one to four damage is not or one to five excuse me damage is nice per attack but it's not groundbreaking and if we're really working on spells more than anything else i'd rather have the buff to the spells so spell specialization earlier could make this character a hell of a lot tougher but with that my name is Gregory. please like, subscribe comment down below i'll see you guys in part two where we do the very boring spreadsheet where we finally triage the spells and pick what we're going to pick and then in video three, hopefully I'll see you guys back for that one, and that's where I'll actually show you the finished build for my strength-based character. With that, my name is Brother Me. Please like, subscribe, comment down below, tell me what you guys think. I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.